Good morning. I'm Lauren Cope, and my pronouns are he, him, his. And I often find it a little unusual to me when I'm asked to welcome others to their sacred space. After all, I'm the guest here today, but maybe as a former staff employee of this beloved school, I can extend a genuine welcome to all of you, whether you're here in person or on Facebook or on Zoom. And I'd like to invite the Zoom people to wave or to unmute and to join us here in some way, including Jill, your cat. Well, it looked like the ears of a cat. There we go. So we're glad the cat has come to worship this morning as well. Welcome to worship in and from the Worley Chapel on the campus of Eden Theological Seminary in Webster Groves, Missouri. Let us prepare for worship as we pray. Gracious God, we are gathered here this morning to worship you. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. We have gathered especially to remember Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the love which sent Jesus to earth for us, we give you thanks. For the grace that comes to us through Jesus, we give you thanks. For the life that is alive in us by the Spirit, we give you thanks. Draw near to us, Lord, as we draw near to you. In hearing your word, in gathering this community of faith, in facing your cross, our prayer is this. Let us hear your good news. Let us see your love, let us submit to your will, and let us glorify you. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning. My name is Tom Ressler. I am a 1983 graduate of this beloved institution. That's a long time ago now. Oh my. And I'm also a good friend of Tim's and here to support him this day. Hear these words from the 23rd chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, he saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do not fear God, since you, do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this one has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The word of the Lord. And I invite those who are on Zoom to unmute yourself as we all respond. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Thanks be, be, to, God. be, to, God. be to God. Well, good morning. You can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
Today I wish to share with you a message of hope. A message of God's presence in the world and our lives, no matter where we are, who we are, or what we might have done. This has been a long time coming, so sorry. A message from the book of Luke, and while at times graphic and a bit blunt, a message that is indeed applicable for today, tomorrow, and any day. I caution all, there might be some emotional triggers, as you can tell, some words that might cause self-reflection, and for some words that might recall past or current situations that are hard emotionally to process. I urge each of you to take the time and space needed for yourselves, as well as as we process this message of hope together. And I should have brought Kleenex. Today we come to look to Luke's account that narrates Jesus' crucifixion. The scene is set with three people who have been sentenced to death. While the names of the two criminals are not shared in the Gospels, Old Latin manuscripts supply the names for two crucified with Jesus. For today, Joathas will be our focus. Come on in. Ladies and gentlemen, Trinity is here today. <laughs> For today, Joathas will be our focus. We all know what it's like to be remembered, and we know what it's like to be forgotten. Think of a time you were remembered. What happened? How did it feel? Thank you. Short break for a second. I've got to be able to see my manuscript. All right. We're good to go now. We'll start from that paragraph. We all know what it's like to be remembered, and we know what it's like to be forgotten. Think of a time you were remembered. What happened? How did it feel? Maybe it was a phone call, a letter, a visit, a gift, a simple word. Maybe it was a surprise, or maybe it was what you were hoping for all along. Maybe it was as seemingly simple as someone recognizing you, looking you in the eyes, and calling you by name. Regardless of what it was or how it came about, it brought you some sense of life, healing, and wholeness. We all want to be remembered. It means that we matter. We belong. We exist, and our life is real. When we are remembered, someone bears witness to all those things. Now compare that to the time when you were forgotten. What did it feel like? Have you ever sat in a restaurant waiting for someone who did not show up? How about that person that looks at you, begins to speak, and you realize they have no idea your name or who exactly you are? Maybe someone forgot your birthday or anniversary. Or maybe they forgot the death of a loved one. In those moments, we feel alone, abandoned and uncertain, afraid, wounded, maybe even angry. There is a sense of helplessness. Questions and doubts arise within us. We are no longer sure of the place where we belong. Regardless of why or how it comes about, there is hurt, there's separation and isolation. I wish to share with you today my words as a man who speaks of being incarcerated and forgotten. Yes, I have made mistakes in my past. And while not the graphic crucifixion story, a connection to Joathas, our tell of the thief on the cross, and the feeling of being forgotten. The air seemed to reek with the smell of apathy and bleach. A weight like the weight of the world must have been placed on my head, shoulders, and chest as I stepped over the threshold into the cell. Four walls painted some type of beige, a ceiling of the same indistinct color, and a steel gray concrete floor seemed to push in around me as I was thrust into my new home. My senses cried out for a sense of belonging, of warmth, 
or the smallest, most minute speck of comfort in which I could curl into and hide. But none was found. The ancient green vital map full of lumps, bumps, and valleys of overuse would serve as my bed. The white industrial sheet stained for multiple others my cover, and there would be no pillow to lay my head. As my eyes continued to survey the room, my cell, my new home, I noticed a television encased in a protective plexiglass box. I'm sorry if you have a stutter, that's hard to say. Protective plexiglass box. And at least there might be some escape from the hell that I had made myself. The toilet, as I gasped, was directly under the television, in plain sight for all to see. I wondered how long exactly I could endure without having to undergo the humiliation of public urination and defecation. A shower without a curtain stood in the corner of the room. My basic privacy was taken away abruptly. My life was gone. My family was gone. And just before my composure starts to break, a meal tray was passed through the hole in the door. The chuck hole, as it's termed, and I knew, knew how I was to be fed, like the dangerous animals at the zoo. It was at that moment, at that point, that I became what I believe is one of the forgotten. As an inmate, you face grieving and suffering, and while the story expressed above only deals with the physical attributes of internment, the mental struggle of a crime committed, and the dealing with that suffering and brokenness is the mountain in the distance. The mountain we must climb when offering forgiveness to those who are held in a space where comfort is often not found and people are forgotten. No one wants to be forgotten or asked to be forgotten. Whether we speak it aloud or not, our cry is to be remembered. Every day we stand on the threshold between being remembered and being forgotten. We also stand on the threshold of remembering and forgetting one another. The thief on the cross, Joathas, wants to be remembered, put back together again, to be found. Much like Joathas, we want to be remembered, to have the many pieces of our life put back together. Our cry to be remembered is also a recognition and confession of our dismemberment. We have been dismembered. Pieces have been scattered and lost. Sometimes it happens through the circumstances of life. Loss and grief, shattered dreams, disappointment, regrets, or the death of a loved one. Other times it comes about through our actions, our words, or even our thoughts. Our life becomes fragmented and broken. When that happens, we can easily become thieves. We take what is not ours. We dismember others' lives in an attempt to put our own back together again. It happens in all sorts of ways, anger and resentment, criticism, judgment, envy, comparison and competition, gossip, bad-mouthing one another, perfectionism, the need to be right and control, busyness, and sometimes just excessive productivity. Look at your relationships. Wherever there is strain, hurt, and brokenness, chances are that you or another are being dismembered forgotten, torn apart. And it is in those times when we wish to be found. If we can use our spiritual imagination, could we imagine what Joathus might share with us if he were to speak? What message could we learn about being forgotten from a man who was at the end of his life and experiencing the greatest suffering he had ever known?
you will be found. Even at the darkest point of your life, you will be found. I'm sure we all felt like nobody was there, felt like no hope existed. The good news is told in the story of Joathas. Even when the dark was crashing through, when he was broken and dying, he was found. As Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. The words of Christ tell us that while we stand in need of God's mercy, we must look and ask that God might remember us. Jesus, dying among the wretched, seeks forgiveness for all and offers us the assurance that we can be found. We can be found in our addiction. We can be found in our anger, our self-righteousness, our anxiety, our strife, and our struggle. God will find us, and there is hope. Even when the dark comes crashing through, God will find you. So let the sun come streaming in, the morning is breaking, and all is new. We are not alone, my friends. God is with us. We have been found by the one who overcomes death. Every time we participate in the life of Christ by living with mercy, compassion, forgiveness, every time we speak a word of hope and encouragement, every time we love without condition or expectation or payment, every time we share our bread and live in communion with one another, we participate in Christ's remembering of our own lives. We do this in remembrance of Jesus. In those moments, we hear the promise, today you will be with me in paradise. I don't know about you, but those words fill me with grace, with hope, and love. And all of God's people said, Oh, come on now. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for coming to my senior sermon today. I want to thank Kyle uh, for playing the piano and my lovely, beautiful, wonderful husband, Shay, for singing for us today. Now, I, you couldn't have gotten out of here without having an assignment to do. Being a teacher for 20 plus years, I have to give homework. So we're going to do some classwork. Everybody has a strip of paper and a pencil, correct? All right. What I would like for you to do, this was all about chains being broken for me. So what I would like for you to do is, while the song is being played and Shay sings, I would like for you to write down on that piece of paper what you might be facing, what might be holding you back from serving God fully and wholly. Because those are the chains that bind us. And then once you're done writing that, I would like for you to bring it up to our two very wonderful friends of mine. And they're going to make a paper chain. And what's going to happen after the benediction is we're going to shred that paper chain. So that all of the things that are holding us back from serving God are no more. Does everybody understand? General nod of the head. Yes, we understand. Awesome.
go forth from this place. Go forth knowing that you are not forsaken. You are not forgotten. And regardless of how deep the hole may be, regardless of how complicated the maze, you will be found. Go forth from this place knowing your, your, your bonds will be broken. Your chains will be set free. And the love and the mercy and the grace of God will always be given to you. Amen. Amen. Father,